Today we're going to be learning about finding the area and perimeter of basic 2D shapes. First, let's take a look at what area and perimeter are. First, area is a measure of the space inside a shape, and it is measured in units squared. It might be meters squared or centimeters squared or millimeters squared, but whatever it is, we are counting how many blocks of a certain size fit into the shape that we are uh, finding the area of. Okay, so that's the area. Then the perimeter, which is P, is the total length or distance around the outside of the shape. Okay, so that because it's a length or a distance, it's just a regular centimeters or meters or millimeters or whatever. It's not squared. Whereas the area is going to be measured in the unit squared because we find, we're counting how many blocks of that size fit inside because we're looking at the shape inside, the, uh, the space inside the shape. Okay, now let's just quickly have a look at some of the conversions that you need to be aware of when we are working in this section. So first of all, what you should already know is that one centimeter is the same as 10 millimeters. Okay, if you look on a ruler, you can see that you've got the centimeters, one or zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And then you've got the millimeter markings in between, and there are 10 of those millimeter spaces inside a centimeter okay so one centimeter is the same as 10 millimeters now uh, you should also know that one meter is the same as 100 centimeters and you should also know that one meter is the same as 1000 millimeters okay but now what you might not know is the conversion where we're looking at area. So the centimeter squared and millimeter squared and so on. So I want you to think about if I have got a block, this is obviously a blown up version of a centimeter, but imagine this is a centimeter, okay? One centimeter by one centimeter squared. So this is one centimeter squared, okay? The area of this is one centimeter squared because it is one square centimeter okay it's a square that has one centimeter on each side okay but now a centimeter is the same as 10 millimeters so if I divide this up into 10 Okay, so now I've got 10 spaces that way. So these are all millimeters. So that one centimeter is 10 millimeters. This one centimeter is also 10 millimeters. Okay, so now I've got 10 that way as well. So I've got 10 by 10. Now, if you were to count this, this would be 100 millimeters squared okay because it's 10 by 10 which makes 100 so 1 centimeter squared is actually the same as 100 millimeter squared so over here 1 centimeter squared is the same as 100 millimeter squared and it's because we have a square that is 10 by 10 so if I have 1 meter which is 100 centimeters then 1 meter squared would be a hundred by a hundred which is ten thousand centimeters squared and this one over here one meter is the same as a thousand millimeters now it would be a thousand by a thousand millimeters that would be one meter squared is the same as one million millimeters squared okay so those are the conversions, and that's the idea that you need to know when you're working with conversions. We also have meters and kilometers. You should know that one kilometer or one kilometer is the same as a thousand meters. Okay, so the same thing happens as what we had over here, that or over there, that if you have one kilometer squared, then it will be the same as one million meters squared okay now we do, we're not going to be working much with kilometers but that is also something that you should know so let me just give this to you over here so you can see it nice and clearly 
So one centimeter is the same as 10 millimeters. You should already know that. But one centimeter squared is the same as 10 by 10, which is 100 millimeters squared. One meter is the same as 100 centimeters. So one meter squared is the same as 100 by 100, which is 10,000 centimeters squared. One meter is the same as 1,000 millimeters. So one meter squared is the same as 1,000 by 1,000, which is 1 million millimeters squared. Okay, so those are some of the conversions that are going to be helpful for you while we're working in this section. Right, now let's go on to finding the area and perimeter of rectangles, squares, and triangles. Now these you should have done before, so we're just going to quickly go through and remind you of the formulas that you should know, or the formulae that you should know. The first one for the rectangle, the perimeter, remember perimeter is the total distance around the outside of the shape. So if I've got a rectangle, you should know that in a rectangle, opposite sides are equal to each other. So if this is a certain length, this will be the same length. And if this is a certain length, this will be the same length. Okay, so I've got two lengths and two breadths. So when you're working out the perimeter, there are two ways of doing it. You can or there's actually three ways of doing it. You can just add up all four sides as you go around the shape if you want to, but you can also use these two formulae over here. The first one is saying length plus breadth, and we double that because there's another length plus breadth over there as well. Okay, so two times length plus breadth. That's one way of writing the formula. Another way of writing the formula is 2L plus 2B, so it's two lengths plus two breadths. This is the one that I tend to use more, but neither of them is more correct than the other. They both are absolutely fine. Okay, and then the area, to work out the area, it's the space inside the shape. To work that out, we multiply the length by the breadth. Okay, so that's how you're going to work out the area and perimeter of a rectangle. Now let's have a look at a square. Now with a square, a square is actually just a special kind of rectangle, so it really is actually the same as what we were doing for the rectangle, but because of the fact that the square has adjacent sides equal to each other, instead of having uh, two lengths plus two breadths, because the length and the breadth are the same as each other, it's actually four of identical si length sh sides, so it's just four times the length of the side. So with a square, you can just multiply the length of the side by four, because there are four sides all with the same length. Then the area is side times side or side squared. Again, it's the same concept as what we had for the rectangle. We're multiplying the adjacent sides together like that, but with a square, they're the same as each other. So it's just side times side, or because they're the same, you can just say side squared as well. This is the one that I'm going to be using more often, but again, they both are equally correct. And then we've got the triangle. Now the triangle becomes a little bit more complicated. We're going to be doing a few more examples of triangles than squares and rectangles because there are a few extra things you need to be aware of with triangles. For the perimeter, you're just going to add up all three sides around the outside of the triangle. Okay, so you're going to add up that side, that side, and that side. So I've got side one plus side two plus side three. Okay, so that's the perimeter. The area is half the base times the perpendicular height. Now, I don't want you to get confused. When you see B for base, it does not mean that it has to be the side that's at the bottom of the triangle. Base doesn't mean the bottom of the triangle. Base means the side of the triangle that is perpendicular to a height. Okay, so over here you've got the perpendicular height. So you can see I've got this dotted line, which is perpendicular to that side of the triangle, and it meets the opposite corner of the triangle. So it is the distance from the perpendicular distance from this corner to the opposite side. That is going to be your perpendicular height. So you have to use the length of the side that it is perpendicular to as your base. Okay, so this would be your height. That would be your base in this particular example. Now with triangles, your height can look different. Your perpendicular height can look different to this. And we're going to be doing, like I said, a few different examples of triangles. So you can kind of get used to how the, the base and the perpendicular height work. Okay, so now let's go and have a look at a couple of examples. The first one we're going to do is this one over here. We're going to work out the area and the perimeter of this shape, which is a rectangle. Okay, so you've got a breadth over here of five centimeters, and you've got a length of eight centimeters. So we're going to go and find the area and the perimeter of this rectangle. Okay, so first of all, to find 
the perimeter, it is either two times in brackets length plus breadth, length plus breadth, or two lengths plus two breadths. Okay, right? This is the formula I tend to use, like I said, more often, but either one is correct. So now I'm going to say two times, and I'm going to fill in the the value of my length, which is eight, in brackets because I need to multiply it. Okay, I'm substituting in here. And then two times the breadth, which is five. Okay, so that gives me 16 plus 10, which is 26. Now remember, perimeter is a distance. So it's going to be 26 meters or centimeters in this case because these were measured in centimeters. Okay, so it's 26 centimeters, not centimeters squared, because it's not, I'm not counting the space inside, I'm not counting how many, how many little squares fit inside, I'm looking at the distance around the shape, which is just centimeters. So that's going to be 26 centimeters for our perimeter. Now let's have a look at our area, okay? The area is length times breadth, okay? Now that's going to be eight times five, which is, 40, but now the area is the space inside the shape, so it is counting how many, in this case, centimeter squares fit into that shape. So it's going to be centimeters squared. So area or perimeter is 26 centimeters and area is 40 centimeters squared. Okay, next example we're going to do is this one over here. Here you've got a square you know that it's a square because they've told you that these two sides are equal to each other okay that means that all the sides are going to be equal because this is um a special kind of rectangle where the adjacent sides are equal that makes it a square okay and we need to work out the area and the perimeter of this shape so first now like i said this is actually a special form of a rectangle so you could use these formulae again if you want to you could say two times length plus two times breadth that would be two times seven plus two times seven it would give you the same result as using the special formula that we have for a square which is four times s which is four times the length of one of the sides because all the sides are equal to each other so four times seven which is 28 again perimeter is the distance around the shape so it's going to be centimeters. Okay, now we're going to do the area. Again, you can use length times breadth if you want to because a square is a special form of a rectangle. And then the length and the breadth are both seven, so it'll be seven times seven. Or you can say side times side or side squared. I'm just going to say side squared, and that is seven squared, which is 49. Now, because it is uh, area, we're measuring that in centimeters squared is the amount of space inside the shape okay so that's what you get for question or the second example where we're uh, finding the area and perimeter of a square the next one we're going to do is this one over here here you've got a triangle okay now with this triangle you've been given a number of different values that you need to know to be able to help you to work out the area and perimeter of this triangle now you need to be careful what you use where okay so the first one we're going to do is the perimeter and that's nice and easy uh, you just need to be careful that you're using the correct values so the perimeter for a triangle remember perimeter is just the total distance around the shape so what I could have done for all of these is just add up all the sides as I go around the shape okay but for the rectangle and the square there were other formulas that I could use but for a for a triangle all we're going to do is we're just going to add up all the sides. So side one plus side two plus side three. Okay, so now the three sides we're going to be looking at. Now just be careful over here when you look at this. This 12 is not one of the sides of the triangle. Okay, that is just telling you the distance from this point, the perpendicular distance from this point to that side over there. Okay, so this 12 is not one of the sides of the triangle. The sides of the triangle are the 20, the 11, and the 13. Now, just be aware over here, if they don't put units of measurement for all of the sides, then you assume that the unit of measurement is consistent for the whole shape. So if this is meters, these will all be meters. Okay, so this over here, even though it doesn't say 13 meters, it is 13 meters. Even though this doesn't say 11 meters, it is 11 meters, because they haven't given me other measurements except for this one, 
So this means that they must all be in meters. Okay. So now let's go and find our perimeter by adding the three sides that actually are part of the triangle. So it's the 20, the 11, and the 13. So over here, I've got 20 plus 11 plus 13. Okay, so that's going to be 44 meters. Right, so that's what you should get for your perimeter. Now for the area. Now the area is where it becomes more complicated. Remember the, the formula for the area is half base times the perpendicular height. Now you might have seen this written like this. Half base times height. Okay, that might be how you've seen it in the past. The reason I, t I like to write it like this is because you need to remember that the height is the, the perpendicular distance to one of the sides. So that'll help you to remember that the B is not the bottom necessarily of your triangle. Sometimes it is, okay? But a lot of the time it won't be. It must be the, one, the side that is perpendicular to the height. So whichever two things are perpendicular to each other, they're going to be your base and your height. Okay, so over here, first half. Now we need to go and have a look at what is going to be our base and our height in this example. So in my triangle over here, the 20 is at the bottom. But it is not the base because it doesn't have anything that's perpendicular to it. So I can't use it as the base. I can only use it as the base if I had this distance over here perpendicular from the opposite corner to the 20. So I can't use the 20 as my base. The 13, I don't have anything perp perpendicular to this line either. I do have something that's perpendicular to this line. It's it's not perpendicular directly to the 11 over here. It's perpendicular to the, this side, which has been extended over there. Okay? And that's fine. So long as it's perpendicular to this line. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use the 12 as the height because it is the distance from the opposite corner, the perpendicular distance from the opposite corner to this line over here. So the 12 is going to be our height. And then the base is just the length of the, 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 of the side of the triangle that this is perpendicular to. So I'm not going to be using this part as part of my base, which is fine because I don't even know it anyway. But if I did know it, I wouldn't be using it. I would just be using the length of the side of the triangle as my base. So it's going to be 12 as my perpendicular height with 11 as the base because that's what it's perpendicular to. Okay, so I'm going to have over here... Area is half times the base, which is 11. Remember, it doesn't have to be the bottom of the triangle to be the base. It is whatever is perpendicular to the height. Okay, multiplied by the perpendicular height, which is 12. Okay, so now when I'm going to work this out, you can use a calculator if you want to. You can just type it into the calculator and that's fine. Okay, if you don't have a calculator on hand, what you can do is half times 11 times 12. The half you can apply, you can remember multiplication is commutative. You can move these things around. You can apply the half to any of it. You're multiplying them all together. So I can say half of 11 or I can say half of 12, whichever is easier. In this case, half of 12 is easier because 12 is an even number. Half of 12 is 6 times 11 is 66. Now you could, like I said, have just typed it into the calculator. Half is the same as 0.5, okay, so or 0 0.5. So when I type it in, I prefer to use decimals when I when I can like that because it's easier to type so 0.5 times 11 times 11 times 12 gives us 66 okay so that is an option as well you can use your calculator there right that is 66 centimeters or no it was meters not centimeters meters squared okay so when we're working out the area of a triangle you need to make sure that you use the correct side as your base and then it must have a perpendicular distance to the opposite corner of the triangle which would be your perpendicular height okay so those are some examples now you're going to do some for yourself the first one you're going to do is this one over here you need to calculate the area and perimeter of each of the following shapes we're going to be doing a few okay and if necessary you need to round off to two decimal places now the first thing you need to be aware of in this particular example over here is you need to notice that you've got a length of a side in centimeters 
and a length of a side in millimeters. Now you cannot work with different units of measurement in the same question. You have to convert both of them to the same unit of measurement. So you need to choose. You can either do centimeters or you can do millimeters. Sometimes it is easier to do one than the other. In this particular case, it really doesn't matter. It's going to give you the same, it's going to be the same difficulty level either way. Okay, so I'm going to give you one minute to work on this example. Okay, so let's go through that quickly. So first of all, like I said, you had to convert either the 6 centimeters to millimeters or the 30 millimeters to centimeters. So if you chose to, ch to convert the 6 centimeters to millimeters, you should have found that it is 60 millimeters. Okay, when you convert from centimeters to millimeters, you multiply by 10. Okay, so I'm going to do it that way, and then I'll also do it the other way in case you convert it the other way. Now, like I said, in this example, it doesn't matter which way you convert. It, it can go either way. And really, in, in any example, it doesn't really matter. But it does tend to help if you avoid decimal fractions or avoid fractions at all. So in this case, you won't get fractions either way. Because if I convert 30 millimeters to centimeters, it's 3 centimeters okay so either way i'm not going to have fractions to worry about because it works out nicely both ways but sometimes you can avoid having decimals by converting one way rather than the other okay so then it's, it's advisable to convert so that you don't have decimals right so now we've got over here if six centimeters is the same as 60 millimeters then for my perimeter i'm going to have two length plus two breadth so that's going to be 2 times the length, which is 60, plus 2 times the breadth, which is 30. And that gives me 120 plus 60, which is 180 millimeters, okay? Because I converted here to millimeters. And then my area is length times breadth. That is going to be 60 times 30, which is 1,800 millimeters squared okay so that's what you should have got if you converted to millimeters now if you converted to centimeters you would have got this the perimeter is sorry perimeter is 2l plus 2b two lengths plus two breadths so that's 2 times 6 plus 2 times 3 which is 12 plus 6 which is 18 centimeters okay so 180 millimeters remember is the same as 18 centimeters because if I multiply that by 10 I will get 180. Remember when we convert from centimeters to millimeters we multiply by 10. Okay so then the area is length times breadth so that is 6 times 3 which is 18 centimeters squared. Now again remember when we convert from centimeters squared to millimeters squared Okay, let me just remind you about that quickly. When you convert from centimeter squared to millimeter squared, it's, con it's multiplying by 10 squared. So we're multiplying by 100, and that's why this is so much more. Even though these two happen to be the same in this example, which they won't always be, okay? But even though they happen to be the same in this example, these are not because here we have a squared value. So we're multiplying by 10 squared rather than just multiplying by 10. Okay, so that's question A. Question B. Here you need to find the area and perimeter of this triangle. I'm going to give you one minute for this example as well.
Okay, so let's go through those. So for question B, we start off with our triangle. We're going to work out the perimeter by adding up all three sides, so side one plus side two plus side three. The sides of the triangle in this example are 21 and 10 and 17 meters. We don't need to put them there. Okay, and then we're going to add those up. So that's 21 plus 10 plus 17 is 48 meters. Okay, so that's what you should get for your perimeter. Now let's go and have a look at our area. Remember, it's half base times the perpendicular height okay so now in this example the base of your triangle is not 10 even though 10 is the bottom okay the base is the 21 because I've got the 8 which is the perpendicular distance from the opposite corner to the side that is 21 meters long so my base is 21 so it's half times 21 multiplied by the perpendicular height which is 8 Okay, now remember when I'm multiplying by half, it's the same as dividing by 2, and it can go in any order. So I can say half of 21, or half of 8, or I can multiply these together and then work out half of it. Doesn't matter. Okay, if I work out half of 8, that is 4 times by 21 is going to be 84. Okay, so I've got 84 meters squared. Again, you could have just used the calculator for that as well, though. Right, so that's what you should get for question B. Question C. You've got another triangle. Here we've got triangle ABC. And in this one, you have not been told the length of AB. Now we have already learned Pythagoras. You're going to need to use Pythagoras to work out the length of AB, which you can use Pythagoras because this is a right angle triangle. Okay? So you're going to use Pythagoras to work out the length of AB, which you're then going to need to help you to work out the perimeter. And now if you look at this one, you'll also notice it's different to the previous one, where we don't have a dotted line showing us the distance, the perpendicular distance from a corner to another side of the triangle. But we don't need it in this one, because over here, this is a corner, and this is the perpendicular distance to that side. Or, this is a corner, and this is the perpendicular distance to that side. When you're working with a right angle triangle, the two sides that are perpendicular to each other will be your base and your perpendicular height. It doesn't matter which is which because it works the same either way. Okay, so when you have a right angle triangle, you don't need to have another perpendicular height because two of your sides are already perpendicular to each other. So they can be your base and your perpendicular height. Okay, so in this example, you're going to have to use Pythagoras to work out the length of AB. And then you're going to have to use that to help you to work out the, per the perimeter and the area of your triangle. So I'm going to give you two minutes to work this one out.
Okay, so let's go through that example. So first of all, like I said, you had to use Pythagoras to work out the length of AB. So AB squared. Now, normally I would say AB squared plus BC squared equals AC squared. Okay, so AB squared plus the other right angle side squared equals the hypotenuse squared. But I'm actually going to skip a step and I'm going to go straight to saying that AB squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared minus the other side squared. I'm going to take it across the equal sign and subtract on both sides right now already. Okay, so this is going to be AC squared, which is 5 squared, minus 3 squared. So if you had first AB squared plus 3 squared equals 5 squared, that's fine, okay? But you can go straight to this over here where you have, if you've got the hypotenuse and one of the other sides, you can say the hypotenuse squared minus the other side squared to get the third side squared, okay? My reason that I can say this, remember whenever you use Pythagoras, you need to give a reason. So this is uh, the Pythagorean theorem in triangle ABC with AB perpendicular to BC. Okay, so that is my opening statement. Then I've got 25 minus 9, which is 16. So therefore, AB is the square root of 16, which is 4 centimeters. Now, this over here, I need to let you know, now that we've done Pythagoras a fair amount already, this is what we call a special Pythagorean triple. 3, 4, 5 are, th uh, you get the triangle, like we've got this one over here, a right angle triangle, 3, 4, and 5. This is what we call a Pythagorean triple, that these are numbers that work out nicely when we use Pythagoras, the Pythagorean theorem, and this is one that you can just learn off by heart and then you can use. So I could have gone straight ahead and said, because I can see that my hypotenuse is 5, one of the other sides is 3, I know that the third side is going to be 4. Okay, it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So I could have gone straight ahead and said AB equals 4 centimeters and my reason would have been the Pythagorean theorem in triangle ABC with AB perpendicular to BC without having to show all of the working out. Because now that you know how to do Pythag uh, use the Pythagorean theorem, you know how to work it out. Now you can start making, taking a little bit of a shortcut and you can skip the working out when you're working with the 3, 4, 5 triangle. There are other Pythagorean triples as well. You have 5, 12, and 13. You have 8, 15, and 17. You have 20, 21, and 29. There are others as well. This is the most common one. This is the one that you can um, skip the working out when you are, when you get a triangle like this, which is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Make sure that when you're working with a 3, 4, tri three, four 5 triangle, the hypotenuse must be 5. If you get a triangle that is like this, so you've got a right angle triangle and this is 5 and that is 3. It's not a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Okay, it'll only be a 3, 4, 5 triangle if these two are 3 and 4 or if the hypotenuse is 5 and one of the other sides is 3 or 4. Okay, so it this is not a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Okay, because it's not going to work out that way. But when the hypotenuse is 5 and the other two sides are either 3 or 4, then it is a 3, 4, 5 triangle and you can skip straight to working out that missing side. Okay, so now we know the length of AB is 4 centimeters because of the Pythagorean theorem. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to work out the perimeter by adding the three sides, side 1 plus side 2 plus side 3, which we now know are 3 and 4 and 5. Okay, so that gives us 12 centimeters. So your perimeter is 12 centimeters and your area is half base times the perpendicular height. Okay, now remember I said, when you have a right angle triangle, the two sides that are perpendicular to each other are going to be your base and your, your height. So that's going to be half times three times four. Okay, so half of three times four or half of four times three, that gives you six centimeters squared. Okay, so that's what you should get for that example. So a few things you need to be aware of. When you get a triangle that it has that is a right angle triangle, 
when you're working out the area, the two sides that are perpendicular to each other will be your base and your height, your perpendicular height. And if you need to use Pythagoras to work out one of the sides, then you're going to, if it is a three, four, five triangle, you can skip out the step of doing the full calculation for Pythagoras using the Pythagorean theorem. You can go straight to the answer using the fact that it's a three, four, five triangle and that you know that it will work out that way. Okay, so that is something that you can do now that you know how to use the Pythagorean theorem. Right, now let's go on to the next example. Question D is a nice easy one. Okay, so we've got a square with a side of six meters. You need, you have one minute to work this one out. Okay, so let's go through that example. Right, so first of all, for our perimeter, because it's a square, we can just add up or multiply the, the length of the side by 4 because all the sides are going to be the same. So it's 4s, which is 4 times 6, and that gives us 24 meters. So that's your perimeter. Then your area is side times side or side squared, and that is 6 squared, which is 36 meters squared. So that's, you, that's what you should have got for question D. Question E. Okay, this is easier than what we had in question C. It's still a triangle, but it is easier than question C. So I'm going to give you one minute to work on this one. Okay, so let's go through that example. So for question E, we first of all, to work out the premise, we're going to add up the three sides. So side one plus side two plus side three. The three sides of this triangle, you have to be careful not to use the 15 because the 15 isn't the length of a side, it is a height, okay? So the three sides of the triangle are 12 meters and 20 meters and 17 meters. So when you add those up, you should have got 49 meters. Okay, then your area, half times the base times the perpendicular height. Okay, so now in this example, our base and our perpendicular height, if you look for the perpendicular height, you'll find that you've got 15 there for your perpendicular height. It is perpendicular, let's look over here, this 15 is perpendicular to 12, which has been extended over there, okay? So, when I'm working with my formula, I'm going to be working with the 15 as my height and the 12 as my base. Right, so over here, it's going to be a uh, half times the base, which is 12 times 15. Right, so half of 12 is 6 times 15 is 90 meters squared. Okay, again, you could have used the calculator for that as well. Right, question F. 
Okay, this one is going to be a little bit more complicated. Over here. It's another triangle. Now for this one, you are going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem again. Okay, I'm going to give you three minutes to work on this one to find the area and perimeter of the triangle ABD. Okay, so let's go through that example. Okay, so first of all, we need to use Pythagoras or the Pythagorean theorem to work out the length of BC and CD so that we have BD. Okay, so first, BC is part of triangle ABC. So I'm going to use it, be using the Pythagorean theorem in triangle ABC to work out the length of BC. So BC squared is equal to, now BC is not the hypotenuse, so I would be saying BC squared plus AC squared equals the hypotenuse, AB squared, but I'm going to go ahead straight away and say it's the hypotenuse squared minus AC squared. So it's going to be AB squared, which is 29 squared, minus AC squared, which is 21 squared. Okay, so that's 29 squared minus 21 squared, or, sorry, 29 squared is 841, minus 21 squared, which is 441, which gives you 400, which means that BC is 20, the square root of 400, which is 20 meters. Okay, so BC is 20 meters. Then that, the reason I could do that was because of the Pythagorean theorem in triangle ABC with AC perpendicular to BC. Okay, so now I know the length of BC. Now I need to find out the length of CD. 
Okay, so same process, cd squared equals 35 squared minus 21 squared. Again, it's the hypotenuse squared minus the other side squared. Okay, now here, I'm just going to type it straight into the calculator right away. I'm going to say 35 squared minus 21 squared. That gives me 784. Okay, so that means that cd is the square root of 784, which is 28 meters. Okay, and the reason I could work this out was because, again, the Pythagorean theorem in this case is triangle ACD with AC perpendicular to CD. Okay, so now I've got the lengths of BC and CD. That means I know the length of BD is going to be 20 plus 28, which is 48 meters. Okay, so now I've got the length of BD. Now I can use that to work out my area and my perimeter. So first, let's have a look at our perimeter. That is side 1 plus side 2 plus side 3. That's going to be 29 plus 35. Those are the two that we'll, we're given the lengths of, plus BD, which is 48. Okay, so 29 plus 35 plus 48 is 112 meters. Right, so that's my perimeter. Then the area, half base times perpendicular height. The base is going to be the BD because it is perpendicular to the height AC. Okay, so it's half times BD, which we worked out was 48, times the perpendicular height of 21. Okay, so half is 0.5 times 48 times 21. And that gives us 504 meters squared. So that's what we should have got for question F. So there was quite a lot that went into that. First, you had to work out using Pythagoras, using the Pythagorean theorem, you had to work out the lengths of BC and CD so that you could get the length of BD. And then you had to use that to work out your perimeter and your area. Right, so now that is how we work out the area and perimeter of squares, rectangles, and triangles. Now we're going to go on to the area and perimeter of circles. The first thing we need to do, though, is we need to look at some of the terminology that we're going to be using while we're working with circles. The first thing is the radius, or R. Okay, the radius is the distance from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle. Okay? Then we've got the diameter, which is the length of a straight line that passes through the center of the circle and it touches two points on the edge of the circle. So it basically the diameter cuts the circle exactly in half. And the diameter is the same as two radii that have been put together. Okay, so it's two times the radius. Then we've got the circumference, which is just another name for the perimeter of a circle. Okay, it's the distance around the circle. And then pi. Now, pi is very important. This is the symbol that we use for pi over here. That is the ratio of the circumference of any circle to its diameter. And it will always work out to the exact same irrational number, 3.141592643599, and it continues going forever. Okay, now, you, there's no way that you can possibly know what pi is, just off by heart. It's not possible. You've got a calculator. You're going to be using a calculator for this. There's no other way of doing it. Okay. Now, please be aware. You may have been told in the past that pi is 3.142. But if you look over here, you'll see that 3.142, 3.142 is a rounded off version of pi. You might have been told that pi is 22 over 7. Now, again, 22 over 7 is not exactly accurate. If you work out 22 over 7, it's going to be slightly different to this. Those are ways of trying to make it look rational where it actually is an irrational number. Now, when we are working with pi, we need to be accurate. So we are going to be using the pi button on our calculator. We're not going to be using 3.142 and we're not going to be using 22 over 7 because those are not accurate. They are rounded off versions of pi and they are not going to give you the correct, accurate results that you need. So you need to make sure that you are using a scientific calculator that has the pi button on it that you can use for these calculations. Okay, now let's go and have a look at the formula that we're going to be using. Okay, so to work out the perimeter, which is also known as the circumference of a circle, 
we're going to be using 2 pi r or pi times diameter. Now remember the diameter is the same as 2 radii. Okay, so here you've got your circle. The diameter is the distance all the way across the circle from one end or one side all the way through the center to the other side of the circle. That's your diameter. The radius is just from the center to the outside of the circle. Okay, so this is your radius over here, but a diameter is actually a radius plus another radius. So 2 pi r is the same as pi times diameter because it's 2 times the radius is the same as the diameter and then you're still just multiplying by pi for both. Okay, so to work out the perimeter or the circumference of a circle, we use 2 pi r or we use pi times diameter. Now, again, neither of them is more correct than the other. It just depends on the situation that you're in, which one you're going to use, what information you've been given. And then for the area, pi r squared. Now, in this case, you can't use the diameter. You have to work with the radius, which means if you've been given the diameter, you first halve it to work out the radius, and then you use that to work out your area. Okay, so let's go and have a look at a couple of examples. The first one we're going to do is this one over here. We have to work out the area and perimeter of the shape. You've been given a circle where they've told you the distance all the way across the circle through the center, which is the diameter, is 10 centimeters. We need to round that off to two decimal places. Now, you have to be given that instruction because you are working with pi, which means you're going to have an irrational answer. So you're going to have to round it off. Okay, so let's go and have a look at how we would do this. So first, we're going to work out our perimeter or the circumference of the circle. So the perimeter is equal to, I've been given the diameter, so I'm going to use the formula that uses the diameter. So pi times the diameter. Okay, now I'm not going to replace pi with anything. I'm going to keep on writing it as pi because pi is a symbol for that long irrational number. I'm not going to change it. I'm not going to write 3.14 whatever, 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 because I would end up shortening it and that's not going to work. So I'm going to keep it as pi, but I'm going to fill in my diameter, which is 10. So it's pi times 10. Now you're going to take your calculator and you need to find pi on your calculator. Different calculators will have it in different locations. This calculator has pi over there. If you have a Casio calculator, pi is going to be somewhere around here probably where you have to use your shift button to be able to access that pi over there. Okay, I prefer my sharp, but you can use whichever calculator you're working with. Just make sure you find the pi button on your calculator. Okay, so in this case, I'm working with pi over here. So it is pi times 10. So pi times 10, or you can type 10 pi as well, equals 31.4, and now I'm going to round off to two, dec two decimal places, so 42, 31.42. And that is centimeters, and because it is perimeter, it is um, the distance around the shape, so it's just in centimeters. So that's how we work out the perimeter. Now the area is pi r squared. Okay, so first, Pi, again, I keep as it is. Now the radius, remember I said, the radius is going to be half of the diameter. So if I've been given the diameter is 10, I need to halve that to get my radius. So that's going to be half of 10, which is five squared, okay? So my radius is five. So that's going to be pi times five squared, which is 78.54, because I'm rounding it off to two decimal places centimeters squared. So that's what you should get for that example. Right, now I'm going to give you a couple that you're going to do for yourself. The first one you're going to do is this one over here. You need to work out the area and perimeter of the shape. Again, you're going to round off to two decimal places. Right, so I'm going to give you one minute to work this out.
Okay, so let's go through that example. So question A, you've been given a circle where you've been told that the radius, the distance from the center to the outside of the circle is two meters. So first to work out the perimeter, now because I've been given the radius, I'm going to use the formula that has the radius in it. So two pi r. You can use the diameter formula and then you just need to multiply the two by two, you need to double it to get the diameter. So that would work as well, okay? But two pi r is two pi times the radius, which is two, and that gives us two pi times two, which is 12.5663. I'm going to round that off to two decimal places. So that's going to be 12.57 meters. Okay, so that's what you should have got for your perimeter. Now the area is pi r squared, okay? So that's going to be pi times, again, the radius was 2 squared. Okay, so I've got pi times 2 squared, which is 12.56637. That's going to be rounded off to 12.57. Now, this is the one example of, and that's meter squared, of a circle where the perimeter or the circumference and the area will be the same as each other. Because if you look at it, 2 times 2 is the same as 2 squared. The only reason these work out the same is because of that, okay? Any other radius is going to give you different perimeter and area, but when your radius is 2, the perimeter and area are going to work out the same as each other. Right, so that's question A. Question B. Here you've got a circle with a diameter of 7 centimeters. You need to work out the area and perimeter. I'm going to give you one minute for this one as well. Okay, so let's go through that. So over here, first of all, my perimeter is, in this case, I've been given the diameter, so I'll use the formula that has the diameter, so pi times diameter. But it doesn't matter, you could use 2 pi r as well, but then you just have to make sure you have the diameter to get the radius. Okay, so pi times 7, or 7 pi, is 2199 centimeters. Okay, so that's your perimeter. Then your area is pi times the radius squared. So that's pi. Now, to work out the radius over here, remember, we're going to halve our diameter. So half of 7, I could write this in one of two ways. I can write it as 7 over 2, or I can write it as 3.5. Either way, it doesn't matter. Okay, if I just say 7 divided by 2, I get 3.5. Okay, or you can write it as 7 over 2, because writing it over 2 is the same as dividing it by 2. It doesn't matter which way you do it. I am I prefer to type it like this, because it's just easier to type into the calculator. Okay, so I'm going to have 3.5 squared. But either way is correct. Right? So pi times 3.5 squared gives me 38.48. And that is centimeters Squared. So that's what you should have got for question B. Now let's go and have a look at a, the last couple of examples we're going to do are using the formulas that we've learned for working out the area and perimeter in a slightly different way. Okay, the first one is this one over here. You've got the area that you've been given for this rectangle is 30 centimeters squared. You need to work out the perimeter, but if you look at it, you have not been told what the breadth of the the rectangle is. You've been told the length of the rectangle, but you haven't been told this distance over here. But you have been told that the area of the of the rectangle 
is 30 centimeters squared. We need to work out the perimeter. So first of all, we're going to have to use the area to help us to work out the breadth, which will then help us to work out the perimeter of our rectangle. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do for this one is we are going to use the area, using the area formula. Okay, let's just do that over there. So we've got our area formula goes like this. Area is equal to length times breadth, okay? Now, we've been told the area is 30. So I'm going to fill that in over there. 30 equals the length I can see is 6 times the breadth. So that's just 6B. So now I need to work out what B is. I'm solving for B in this equation, which we've now got. Okay, now you know how to solve equations. We're going to divide both sides by 6 to get rid of that 6. So that's going to be 5 equals B. So my breadth is 5 centimeters. Okay. Now that I know that, I can use it to work out. So now I've got my rectangle. I know that this is 6 centimeters. Now I know that this is 5 centimeters. Now I can use it to help me to work out my perimeter. The perimeter is 2 lengths plus 2 breadths. So that's going to be 2 times 6 plus 2 times 5 is 12 plus 10 is 22 centimeters. So now I know that my perimeter is 22 centimeters. Right, so that's how we do a question like this. If you've been given the area or the perimeter, you use the formula to work out whatever information is missing, which you can then use to work out whatever you're being asked for. Okay. I'm going to give you two that you're going to do for yourself, and then we're done for today. The first one you're going to do is this one over here. You need to work out the perimeter of this shape that you can see in the diagram is a square because they've told you that these two sides are equal to each other. Okay, you need to work out the perimeter if the area is 81 meters squared. And I'm going to give you one minute to work on this. Okay, so let's go through that. So first, you had to work out, using the area, you had to work out the length of the side. Okay, so our area formula for a square is side squared or side times side. Now, I know that the area is 81. Okay, so when I work out the, the length of the side, I need to cancel out the square by square rooting. So the, the length of the side is the square root of 81, which is 9, and this is meters. Okay, so now I know that the length of my side is 9 meters. Now I can use that to work out the perimeter by using 4 times the side, so that's 4 times 9, which is 36 meters. Okay, so now I know that my perimeter of the square is 36 meters. Okay, so that's question A. Then the last one for today is this tr the circle over here. You have been told that the perimeter of the circle is 5 centimeters, and you need to work out the area of the circle. You need to round off your final answer to two decimal places. Now be careful. Remember, you are not allowed to round off until you get to your final answer. Okay, so keep anything in between in terms of pi or whatever so that you don't end up rounding off until your final answer. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to try this question and then we'll go through it.
Okay, so let's go through that last example. First of all, when you have a question like this, with circles, remember, you are not allowed to round off until the very end of the question. You have to be aware of that. Okay, so I've been told the perimeter is 5 centimeters. So I'm going to take my perimeter formula for a circle. The perimeter is pi times diameter or 2 pi r. Now, I'm going to use 2 pi r simply because I need to work out the area and the area I need the radius for. Okay, so I'm going to do the 2 pi r option rather than the pi times diameter option because I want to be able to get what the radius is to use in my other formula for working out the area. Okay, so I've been told that the perimeter is 5, so I fill that in over there, and that's 2 pi r. Okay, now, remember when you are solving an equation, we want to work out what r is. Pi is not an, a variable. Pi is um, an exact amount, okay? So, I don't treat it the same as I would with variables. I'm not solving for pi. I am going to use pi as any other number in the same way that I would with any other number. So over here, if I want to get the r on its own, I want to get rid of everything else that's not part of r, okay? This is all being multiplied by the radius. So now remember when I want to get the radius on its own or the r on its own, I want to divide by anything that is being multiplied by r. So I'm going to divide by the 2 and the pi. So that's going to give me this, 5 over 2 pi or 5 divided by 2 pi equal to r okay now i'm not going to if i were to type this into my calculator i'd have 5 divided by and then 2 pi i have to divide by the whole thing it's not divided by 2 and then times pi be careful of that okay so i'm dividing by i'm saying 5 divided by 2 pi equals and that gives me an irrational number now remember i said you can't round off early so don't do that keep it as 5 over 2 pi and use it as 5 over 2 pi in your other formula because then you're not rounding off okay so i'm going to keep it as 5 over 2 pi now i'm going to go on to my other formula area is pi r squared so now in place of the r i'm going to put in 5 over 2 pi so that's going to be pi multiplied by 5 over 2 pi, all of it is being squared. The whole thing is being squared. So now I'm just going to type that into my calculator exactly as it is over there. So I've got pi times in brackets, 5 over 2 pi, 5 divided by 2 pi, close the brackets, and that is squared, equals. Now I get 1.9894, which I can now round off, because now I'm at the end of the question. So it's 1.9894. Nine, and this is centimeters and because it's area it's centimeters squared so that's what you should have got for that example be careful that you don't round off early so when you have something like this keep it in terms of pi in this case i kept it as five over two pi okay and then once you've done that you fill it in exactly like that into the next formula which you then can then use so that you don't end up using a rounded off value for carrying on with your with your calculation and that is how we work out the area and perimeter of basic shapes. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.